I, I, I didn't have enough time to finish my talk, so I'm going to give like one minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <share. laughs> anyway, just want to mention something that's important for us as Libyans. And I, in Christmas time, I was in Libya, so I, I was very close to uh, Libya right now. I just want to say one program that I would like to, to mention that uh, now many of the Libyan citizens are cut off from adequate uh, access to phone and internet services, cut off from uh, medical supplies, food, and shelter. Some cities, even like Zawi and some other cities, they cut the electricity and water. Uh, and the uh, people are in great demand for medical and humanitarian uh, supplies and assistance. As many Libyans and other uh, and refugees, in, uh, they uh, flee to neighboring Tunisia and uh, Egypt. They put great strain on those resources, uh, the resources of those countries. And the neighboring countries have recently overthrown their governments and, and are still in the process of establishing new orders. So therefore, we don't have a system established that can manage this influx of those refugees. Furthermore, we request the, we request the international community to fulfill its obligations to protect human beings from genocide and crimes against humanity without any direct military uh, intervention uh, on the Libyan soil. Uh, the European and US governments have discussed the availability, uh, the available options of uh, which including the possible of no-fly zone and humanitarian aids, and we're waiting for that decision to stop all those uh, planes that hitting directly to our innocent peoples. All what I'm asking for the support and the help from our community here locally and nationwide. And thank you. We have several organizations. One of them, the Islamic League, they have contacted in the, in our people in, in, in Washington DC, they're helping. And we are collecting some money here to, to, to support the people. You know, we have, in a daily basis, hundreds of people are either killed or injured. And the problem, the killed are already gone, so. But the problem right now, with thousands and thousands are injured, starting from six months old all the way to 70s, those are needs the help that we can. Okay. Question over there? We have another question. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just wondering earlier you said, um, sorry, earlier you said that um, uh, his family has already seen like what has happened to Mubarak and they want to avoid that kind of international humiliation. And you said that he's extorting the ambassadors by holding their family hostage. But his own personal family is, um, does it look like they're trying to influence him to? I guess there is a struggle within the family to, to, to gain power. Uh, it's no secret. Uh, he would uh, sell his kids in, uh, in a heartbeat if he thinks that that would uh, make him stay in power. And uh, any of the kids would get rid of him uh, if he, they can, and that would give them power. So there's no doubt that there is there, that, that uh, they all would be struggling for power. So, uh, and what's the rest of the question? I'm sorry. The family is, no, the question, I can ambassadors to the um, No, I was just, because um, I was just wondering what's stopping the family from trying to discourage him from hanging on so tightly. Oh, you mean like talk sense into them? <laughs> they, they, uh, it's, it's not plausible, they can't, they can't exist anymore. Yeah. Because, because they all came with package, because they are all part of this power uh, structure. None of them were uh, just on the sideline uh, watching to come and tell, to try to talk sense into their dad to stop the nonsense. Because they're all, they, they, they all part of this. They're all part of this power. And they all are uh, bloodthirsty, money thirsty. That, uh, I mean, um, through many surprises, save who tried to, uh, to sell himself as the moderate, Western, educated, uh, common sense, uh, uh, democracy seeking person. Uh, he was ahead of his dad in threatening people with his finger yelling at them in TV and pretty much saying it's uh, you either go back or you're going to get killed and we're not leaving here. I mean, he was he was more he was stronger than his dad and his rhetoric in, in, in trying to uh, 
to uh, threaten the people. So I, I don't see them. Uh, I don't see them doing that. We have seen in some of the uh, exchanges with the media that there is a distrust and there is a conflict in between them. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, Al-Sadi was uh, saying that he didn't choose his dad. In, in a way of saying, you know, get me out of here. Uh, I have not this anymore. Uh, and um, I guess there's one or other two comments by, uh, by some of them uh, that suggest that. But no, I, I don't think that any of them would try to talk any common sense here. That's part of the, the whole game. I would like just to say that you're absolutely right. I'm aware that corruption is rampant in Libya and, and that he's sort of trying to brainwash the younger generation of Libyan. But my point was that, you know, we don't see in Libya the same organized structure of corruption as it is in, in, in Egypt and elsewhere. And that's why if the hardliners in Gaddafi camp are defeated militarily, there is a possibility that the Libyan can certainly, in, in, in a shorter period, uh, sort of create good institution and, and good governance. But, but again, you have to defeat these men who are fighting for him first. And I, I, I don't see that happening very soon unless something changed in terms of, of uh, sort of the technical aspects of, of, and military aspect of it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's